It looks like everyone's getting settled in. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, Andrew Moore from Iron Edge Group has a great webinar in store for you guys around fully utilizing Microsoft Teams for distributed work. Um, he's going to be sharing some great tips and tricks that are going to be fantastic for teams and users, but also for team leaders and management as well to kind of flatten the communication curve with the distributed workforce. So we hope you all enjoy it. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with Iron Edge Group, I'd love to give you guys a little bit of background on who we are and how we got started. So Iron Edge is a premier IT solutions provider for Texas-based businesses. We provide customer-centric strategy and support to eliminate frustration that companies face when dealing with technology. Um, a lot of organizations reach out to us when they need our expertise to help their IT staff that's feeling overwhelmed, understaffed, and lack time to be strategic, and when they feel like they're continually frustrated by the hassle and complexity of technology. We've been doing this for the past 15 years now, and I think that we've gotten pretty good at it. Um, today's webinar host is going to be Andrew Moore. He is the Chief Operating Officer of the Iron Edge Group. He's been with the company for around 10 years now, and he is a Lean Sigma 6 green belt. He attained his degree in business management, and he's been doing IT and business consulting for a really long time. Um, he has a really unique background in bioterrorism defense, so I have to give him props. Um, he made sure that Iron Edge, as well as our clients, were ready to work from home and that we constantly are focusing on business continuity, disaster recovery, and how to constantly implement tools and processes that are going to help move us forward to being able to handle working distributedly. Um, he's also joined by our panelist, uh, Branson Braid. Branson is a senior project engineer for Iron Edge Group. He focuses on strategic business outcomes um, through network optimization and tool utilization for our clients. And he has over 10 years of IT experience. So y'all are going to be in great company and I hope y'all enjoy. Andrew, take it away. Thank you, Cassandra. I appreciate the warm introduction. Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another Iron Edge Group webinar. I hope that you guys um, are settled in. We're going to try to go through a little bit of uh, landscape knowledge share, talk about um, what we see in regards to the current climate of working remotely, uh, being distributed, um, what that means for organizations, digital transformation. Um, if you join me on my last webinar, that was 40 minutes of the, the webinar with a little 10 minute taste. It's going to be kind of opposite this time. I'm going to focus for about 10 or 15 minutes on just kind of where we are, what's changed since the last time we talked, uh, and then really kind of dive into the, the demo component <clears throat> of Teams um, and how we use it and how we're um, evangelizing other people begin to use it and the, the knowledge of the transformation that we've seen in regards to our company and with our clients. Um, for the processes and utilizations that have been put in place that's really helped with being remote. So um, jump right in. So let's talk about what's happened. So we talked about this before, but it's worth touching on 10 years of digital transformation happened overnight. Um, it's no small wonder we're in the position that we're in with the pandemic. Um, but one of the things that, that we have seen is that people were beginning to work remote, people were moving through digital transformation, folks were um, learning to work from home or to work anywhere. We have these great, you know, uh, smartphones, we have, you know, powerful laptops, we have high-speed internet at our houses, flexibility was happening. Um, but it was still one of those things where companies didn't want to really invest in the time uh, to figure out how to make their workforce more productive remotely. Working in the office worked pretty well. Um, there was a significant amount of what I call 20th century management oversight 
um, that was involved in a lot of the ways that offices were physically set up, the way that work uh, forces were built, teams were created. Uh, and because of the pandemic, um, those long-term digital transformation processes and work habits that would have taken a decade got crunched into about 60 days, which is amazing. Um, as we've begun to reopen, especially here in Texas, um, we've seen folks that have kind of reverted back uh, to their offices. Uh, and I'll talk about that in, in a minute. But for the most part, there was a lot of change that happened, including with software uh, evolving really quickly uh, and with organizations trying to figure out how to make money and uh, keep their team intact as they were all remote. Uh, we've done a lot of research on this and we talked about this again last time. The CEO of Vonage said that the pandemic has created a permanent shift in the way people are working. And while not every organization will go 100% work from home forever, there's certainly gonna be more support for virtualized environments. Uh, and that's what we're seeing for most of the folks that we work with and for us especially, uh, knowledge workers, folks that are providing services, they're in a place right now where they are going to allow some of their employees to continue to work from home, probably for the foreseeable future. There will be entire departments that may never step foot in a traditional office environment again because of what's happened uh, with the pandemic. One of the things that, that the pandemic did is um, it accelerated who was working from home that didn't normally work from home. So there were a significant amount of work from home jobs. You know, four or five million jobs, according to, to Flex Jobs, were permanently work from home jobs in March of 2020. Uh, right after that, uh, for about 60 days, that jumped to 57% of the workforce, right? So I've, I've said it before, you know, the genie is out of the bottle. Like people have been able to work from home. People, uh, organizations did see um, that their companies could make it through a remote workforce shift um, and all sectors of the economy were affected by it. So people are much more um, tolerant of it as they weren't before. I know that there was always a concern uh, back before was, well, what if my clients aren't okay with me being remote? Or what if people expect me to go to sales meetings? Or what if, um, you know, I, um, I have a few folks in the office and somebody's remote, is that really gonna work? And the answer is, yeah, it's absolutely gonna work because people are, are understanding of the situation that we're in and we should take advantage of this time to really start trying to get uh, a handle on being distributed and being remote. One of the things that we hear a lot is that folks aren't productive when they're working remotely and that actually wasn't borne out by the data. So in March and April of this year, compared to the same two months a year ago, there was a 47% increase in, in productivity uh, according to ProtoScore. Now, I'm a fan of data, so what I'm gonna tell you is that um, you can look at this information and say, wow, that's amazing. Um, but I could also tell you that it's probably because people had nothing better to do but work. People were probably working through lunch, folks were working late or getting up early. Um, they had more flexibility. Their bosses probably weren't judging their KPIs the way that they would if they had been in the office. I think there are a lot of things that can contribute to this 40% increase, but I think it's safe to say that it's a double digit increase no matter how you look at it and that this wasn't a decrease in productivity. So I think this bodes well for the idea that management and down-level employees can say, listen, working from home can be normalized, working from home can create productivity um, and being distributed and having a team that's not all in one location can be normalized in a way that makes the company money. So what's changed since the last time I talked to you guys about a month ago? Well, something unfortunate has happened and we've got spikes and boomerangs and, and I'll talk about what I mean by that. We are still technically in the first wave of the pandemic. Uh, we've never actually, in Texas anyway, we've never actually plateaued. Um, we continue to, to go up. We've never had a decrease, a significant one anyway, statistically speaking. So this would be a second, we'll call it spike uh, in cases. And what we saw was that while everybody was at home um, and sheltering and, and being remote, um, people were, were not spreading the virus. And so then when everybody went back to work, a lot of folks in some companies didn't make significant changes to the way that they were dealing with their office space. Some were, some weren't. Um, and what happened was, is everybody kind of got back out and about and folks got uh, infected again for whatever reason, whether it was through their kids or going out to eat or no fault of their own or because they weren't taking precautions or for whatever reason, we've got what I'm calling a boomerang effect where everybody went back into an office because they were like, great, now we can get back to the way we worked before. And then two people got sick and all of a sudden the office got shut down and now you're 
back at home. So what I've been telling our clients and the way that we're running our business is you should expect these spikes and boomerangs for the foreseeable future until there is a pan, uh, until there is a uh, vaccine in place uh, or some sort of like therapeutic. Um, and we need to be prepared for those so that our businesses aren't completely interrupted. So I think what I'm hoping people start to understand in the way that we're looking at it is um, the new normal is you're going to go back into an office sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be at home. Some people will permanently be at home. Some people will permanently be in the office. There's going to be this shift where everybody's going to be remote and distributed for the foreseeable future. So companies can fight that and wind up losing productivity and not really being on the cutting edge of, of moving their company from, from survival to thriving. Um, but we feel that if you're really gonna take advantage of this situation uh, for the best health and safety of your team, their family members, and for your business, right, making sure that you can continue to generate revenue, you should be prepared to have systems that are put in place that allow you to be flexible and work anywhere. So how do teams thrive and not survive? So I'm gonna to touch on what is a distributed workforce um, and what a remote workforce looks like. So there's a couple of different models for distributed workforce. Um, I use the word distributed workforce. It was something uh, I believe that was either coined or has been taken up by the um, founder of WordPress. I really enjoyed uh, some uh, articles and uh, podcasts that he's done lately about this subject. And uh, I use some of his information in this uh, webinar I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but really the idea of being distributed is that there's no specific place that you would consider to be the hub of where you do business. Um, I would argue that most organizations right now in the grand scheme of things are probably remote, which means that there is a physical location that is considered to be the primary place where work gets done and then people are scattered from there, right? Um, some organizations will have a decentralized workforce environment. Um, our company is a little more like that because we have leadership in both Houston and in San Antonio. Uh, so decisions can be made from disparate locations uh, with people being distributed out from there in a decentralized fashion. Uh, and then really the, the ultimate goal would be is to move to a, a system where you don't have to have a central location in order for your organization to function, that you have flattened the way that people communicate. Um, you would be in a position where people can make decisions at different levels uh, that affect the organization in positive ways. Um, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have some hierarchy, but it does allow you to not have to have a physical presence um, in a specific place in order for your company to, to function. And I think that's really important to understand kind of how these models work a little bit, and especially for the folks that are here in Texas or in Florida, um, because we do not only have to deal right now with a pandemic, but we deal with constant flooding, we deal with hurricanes. Um, so it's really important to be prepared so that your organization can at any given moment be uh, remote and not all be in the same place so you can continue to get work done. So what's the clear path forward? How do you navigate moving to a work in a, a remote work environment? So what I would say is establish how you want to work, right? Um, you, you really need to decide what that looks like. Are you going to be distributed? Are you going to be um, hybrid with um, kind of like a remote environment where you've got a central location? Um, as an organization or as a team, you should start making some decisions about what that looks like. Um, something that I haven't talked about uh, in my other webinars, but just to kind of give you a quick idea of, of what things might look like in the future if you do decide right now to go distributed or to go remote. Um, that doesn't mean you're never gonna see your teammates again, except for video conferencing, right? For now, it makes it difficult for people to physically get back together. Um, but ultimately the goal would be to have folks get back together and have uh, events, right? Two, three day things where people are able to get together and spend very focused time on their departments or one another, really building relationships. Um, for those of you who have been to conferences before, you know how um, intense those relationships can be when you get together with a few people a couple of times a year, uh, going out to dinners, having drinks, um, you know, working on things that are specific to your department, your organization, your industry. So we're not saying that being distributed or being remote means you will never get back together again. What we are saying is the goal is to try to flatten out your day-to-day -day communications and collaboration and the tools that you use so that 
80 to 90% of the time when you are remote, you guys are still able to make decisions. You're able to move the ball forward. So once you kind of define what that might look like for your organization, we recommend that you define your outcomes. What do you expect to produce in each department, right? And then you establish what you measure these outcomes uh, to be. So whether those are billable hours, whether that's new sales, whether that's closed projects, whether that's widgets, whatever it looks like, you need to define the outcomes and build some measurement around them. And then digitize the processes that allow you to create those outcomes. Whether you're changing the way that you do sales. So a good example of our digitization of processes, which um, seems pretty basic, but we would have a process in a new sales engagement where we would go out to lunch with somebody, meet with them at their office, then they would come to meet at our office. We would present them with packets of paper information. Um, we've digitized all of that to use uh, Zoom meetings, Teams, um, PowerPoint presentations, um, PDF documents of the information that we've put together. Um, and we've changed our entire process so that we can meet and move forward with new client engagements without having to um, present them with any sort of physical collateral uh, or do physical interaction with them. We've digitized a huge component of that entire process, right? Uh, and then finally, which we'll talk about today in depth, is implementing collaboration and communications technology that support flattening out of your organization and shift your work to a decentralized system. So once you've figured out what your outcomes need to be and you start digitizing processes, you really need to put it in place a system that allows people to collaborate, allows people to communicate in a flattened way, a way that doesn't require very specific in-person interaction. There are times when getting on a, a, a video conference call is the fastest way to get something done. But having streams of information, having extensive notes, having recorded video conference calls or meetings, taking notes in those calls, um, being able to share files and collaborate them in, in real time or as those, those folks are available, those are important collaboration technologies that will allow you to become more productive as your workforce is uh, distributed and less available at the same times. Something to remember as you guys move forward with distributed workforce is that as you are, as an organization are asking people to work from home, their home life doesn't necessarily follow an eight to five Monday through Friday, although we'd like it to, uh, based on our old 20th century way of, of doing business, um, in a new 21st century way of approaching collaboration and productivity, we need to understand that there are going to be times when somebody's going to have pest control over, somebody's kid is sick and they're going to be at home, um, that somebody's dog is going to bark, uh, that they're not going to feel well themselves one morning, but maybe they're going to be better in the afternoon and they want to catch up with their work. And so anything that we can do to try to create systems that allow that collaboration not to have to happen in real time, but to happen as folks have the time to contribute and be productive to the team allows the organization to find exponential growth in the group that they already have because they are not dependent on one another being in the same time zone. They're not dependent upon one another being available right at eight o'clock unless it's absolutely necessary. It gives a lot more flexibility to the idea of being distributed. So the collaboration tools really help with that and should be focused on when looking at those tools. For the sake of our communication today, we're gonna to talk about Teams, right? Because Microsoft Teams is what we use and I really like it. And I think for right now, it's best bang for your buck, especially if you're already using Office 365. So talking about Matt Mullenweg, who's the founder of WordPress, he's de uh, developed this organizational model that he's applied to what a distributed workforce look like. And he has these five levels of uh, the distributed workforce maturity. One is no deliberate action. So I would say this is most companies like circa 2000, right? Or early 19 or late 1990s. Uh, nothing deliberate's been done to the company to support remote work. You can kind of keep the ball rolling. You can pick up the phone and talk to somebody, right? You can log into your email and respond, right? But there's nothing that anybody's done that says, hey, working remotely is okay and we can be super productive and you can do it for days or weeks at a time. Level two is where a lot of folks were at the beginning of this year, which is recreating the office online. So it's where your employees have access to video conferencing software like Teams or Instant Messenger, like Yammer, they've got email. And instead of like redesigning the way the work works and taking advantage of these new mediums, uh, people basically just do exactly what they did in the office, right? So they do drive-bys, right? Where they just like hit people up. They, uh, 
Uh, they, they don't post anything into the team's chat groups. They just IM each other back and forth, like without defining what the communication is about. There's no pinning of information. They're not creating links to the, info, to the data they're using. They're sharing files with one another um, during a video conference, but not uploading them to SharePoint so they can collaborate in real time. They're basically just doing what they always did at work, but now they're doing it electronically. Level three is when the organizations start to adapt and take advantage of the medium. I'll be honest with you, like our company is solidly right now in level three. Like we haven't moved to level four yet. And some companies I don't know can move to level four based on the type of work that they do. That's something I'm still trying to parse out in my mind. But for us right now, I think we're solidly in level three, which is where we start really looking at how they collaborate with one another using shared documentation so that information can be updated in real time, uh, streaming information, flattening communication so people can talk to each other, um, grabbing folks um, that are in different teams and, and creating communication strings outside of email that allow them to see the train of thought and the consciousness of, of everybody as they're moving through decision-making processes. Um, those are really, really important and it helps to eliminate a lot of risk um, in the trans, in the translation of, of problems and time wasted as people begin to communicate and actively use the, the tools um, to reduce the amount of work they're doing, but increase the um, efficacy of their communication. And then level four is asynchronous communication. And that's where we talk about how most things don't require an immediate response. I think we believe that they do, which is pretty cool that, um, you know, we all feel like we're that important that what we need to have happen what we need to know has to happen right this second. And as a, as a manager, and, and I guess as a C-level at this point, I um, sometimes feel like that. I'm like, I just need to know this right now. Well, in most cases, if I really thought about it, I don't. There's a lot of things I don't really need to know right now. I just wanna know them right now. And so um, being able to put that information together and have the conversation with our team and say, we've defined your outcome, right? Your outcome is this project deliverable, is this um, documentation, uh, is this sales contract, whatever it might be, and we've established that it needs to have this level of quality and it needs to be completed at this time, right? And you've got stuff going on with your house or you've got stuff going on personally or, you know, you just like to sleep in and you do your best work from, you know, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Honestly, for those folks that work on our team and in other teams, I don't know that I care when you work, right? As long as you're collaborating with people effectively, as you're available to them uh, for emergency purposes and that you're getting a high quality work product put together on time um, and you're meeting those outcomes. That's the next level of, of uh, getting through to a distributed workforce, right? Allowing people to work when they need to work, communicating off grid, on grid, uh, and making sure that um, people within your organization aren't making mistakes because everything's documented properly. So what we're telling everybody is your first step is to get from level two to level three, because we believe that like most people are at level two, right? Is that you have to stop waiting for the go back to the office mentality. Again, I know that some folks have already gone back to the office, but I can tell you right now in Texas, as of four hours ago, our governor was like, hey, hold up. Maybe we should stop doing some of this stuff, right? Like, let's stop doing elective surgeries for a little while. Let's make sure everybody's wearing, well, he didn't say that, but local officials, like everybody's wearing masks, right? Like, like new restrictions are probably coming and there are some organizations that are pulling back from being in their office and going back to being remote again. So rather than for forcing your organization to a painful boomerang effect, focus on saying, look, what would it look like if we were gonna stay distributed or not go back to the office for a while? And I call it burn the boats, right? We're not gonna go back, we're going forward. Once your organization gets to the point where it's decided the, you, we're not going to do things the way that we used to. It's actually kind of freeing for most people because most people are very anxious and they were like, when are we going to get back to the way things were? And if you go, we're never going to get back to the way things were, we're going to make it better. It's going to be awesome. And we're going to be way more flexible. So getting from level two to level three requires folks to burn the boats, move forward, right? Make the decision. You can't move your company into a remote workforce environment using 21st century communication and collaboration techniques um, use with an overlay of 20th century management, decision-making and oversight. It just doesn't work. So everybody's got to adapt from the management team all the way down to the employees. So utilizing the technology for efficient communication and collaboration. We're gonna talk about teams for a little bit. 
and then I'm going to get into the um, I'm going to get into the the demo here. So, what is Microsoft Teams? Most of you think Microsoft Teams is a really cool chat video conference system. It does do chat, right? Which is cool. It also does meetings, which is also cool. But it does a lot more than that, right? So the chat functions, if you use them properly, are more than just people communicating and sending emojis to each other. The meetings are much more than just a video conference. It integrates into systems like Microsoft Stream. It allows you to create plugins like Planner and OneNote. It allows you to upload SharePoint documents so that you can collaborate in real time on what's going on within the organization and in your department. It allows you to create security groups and segment people for very specific projects and channels. It allows you to, at some point, which we haven't uh, implemented yet, but if you wanted to, you could use it as your primary phone system. Um, it's on your cell phone. It's on your laptop. It can be used through the web. Um, it's an amazing collaboration tool. And I think that it's um, incredibly underutilized. So um, eliminating fly, uh, drive-bys, um, creating threaded communications, um, being able to put screenshots in, quickly add people to conversations. That's a huge part of the chat. Um, and, and building the fully integrated digital collaboration hub around the channels is going to be one of the most important parts of the team that I'll get into. So that's all being said. That was a mouthful of stuff to talk about. I did feel like I needed to set the plate for the folks that weren't here before. So I'm going to get into the demo part of this a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you guys about, I'm going to show you guys a few of the things that I think are like super cool and important with teams. So I'm going to change my screen share here real quick and move over to the demo section. Screen share. Share screen. Um, we're going to share the screen. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Teams. So Teams is, there we go. Um, so this is Microsoft Teams. I'm sure you've seen it. This is our Microsoft Teams demo services account. Um, and we're going to start with some basic functionality, right? So things that I think are really important that people don't go over enough. And I think it's important for you to uh, understand how these work and to utilize this within your team. First and foremost, I am a huge fan of personal space when it comes to being remote. It is incredibly important for you to establish what is your time and what is time that can be given to people within your organization. So letting people know when you're available, what your availability status is, right? So that you are productive in the time that you have on the calendar is critical. One of the things that I hear constantly, especially from the president of our company, he's like, I'm getting picked apart all day. I'm like, cool. Are you setting yourself to do not disturb? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, that's important. You should set a time in your calendar that you're working on very specific things that people don't add meetings to your calendar. And then you should set yourself to D&D &D during that time period so that you're not constantly getting alerts. And I know that some down-level employees will be like, well, what if my boss needs to get in touch with me? That's a good point. You can set all sorts of allowances within the systems to allow certain people to barge in if necessary, right? So one of the things that people should be using is this availability, right? So whenever I'm like in my zone or I'm in a meeting or I need to do something where I don't want to be disturbed, I set myself to D and D, which is great. It says you will only get notifications for urgent messages from your priority contacts. So you can come in here and you can say, who are my priority contacts? Who has the ability to override my D and D? which is super great. Gives you the ability to say, hey, this person is important to me and they can interrupt me when I'm doing something that uh, I need to focus on. One of the other things that we also do a lot is set status message. This is really cool. So I can just say like, out to lunch, be back in 30 minutes. So tell people to show that message when they message me. And then I can do something where I set it for to expire in 30 minutes and I'm done. So when I'm in a meeting, people will set a status, says that I'm out till 4.30 and they'll know that whenever they're trying to include me in information, which is great because now I've established when I'm gonna be around and how I can collaborate with people. It's a really important thing that everybody should be doing. And I think that they uh, ignore this function and they just 
always, they expect their calendar to be the thing that kind of keeps them up to date. And the calendars are good, right? Whenever you have stuff booked in your calendar, it will show you as busy when you're in a meeting, but busy isn't the same as D and D. And I know that in meetings, I constantly get pinged. Other things that are really important, your activities, right? Activities are really important. You'll see all sorts of at mentions, things that are in your systems, right? You can check your own activities, stuff that you can do within the activity is you can filter by at mentions, replies, reactions, missed calls, voicemails. There's not a lot of data in this particular demo for that, but if you guys have used Teams at all, you'll see a significant amount of data here and it's a lot to filter through. So you can do the same thing here. Not to mention that there are filters that you can apply for things that are going on within your chat. You can also look to see, you can also put in information by name and you can search information. Another really important thing that a lot of people don't know about, which I love because I'm a big fat nerd, is this. So there's all these like switches that you can use inside the search bar, right? So that if I want to say call Dan, it automatically does. So it gives you the ability of making some very quick decisions, right? And you can look at information, you can go to things, you can get help. Um, there's a team helper bot. There's all sorts of really neat stuff in here. This one's really cool. Like the org chart. Oh, organization does not exist for Dan. That's what I get for doing a live demo. Um, it actually will build an org chart based on what's in Active Directory, which is really cool. So there you go, boom. So now I can see who reports to who within the organization. This is really good for larger orgs. So if you kind of need to know who's in each department or who they work with, or if you want to communicate with somebody over there, uh, you can call up and call down. So stuff that's already built into the system that you didn't know that was there, which is pretty cool. So chats, this is where people underutilize teams all the time. So when you have a chat with a specific person, you can't do anything with it, but just chat with them, right? So this chat that I have right here with Johanna, it's just a chat. So I'll just, you know, hello. Right, we're just talking. Um, we can add additional information to this. I won't go into that right now, but what I think people underutilize is if I wanted to have a chat with both Haley on our team and Dan, and don't worry, Haley, you're probably freaking out thinking I wanted you in this demo. You don't have to be. I didn't expect you to be. So I wanna talk to the two of them I think we actually had a talk last time where we were, we were chit-chatting. Um, and then when you hit this drop down here, one of the things you can do is name this group. This gives you the ability to have very specific structured conversations around a specific topic, right? So we want to have a topic around uh, Andrew's webinar, right? I want to say 620. So then I'll begin typing a message when like, Thanks for your help. And we can actually go through the process of having a conversation that's structured around a very specific topic. And what I like is that if I need to respond to this later, what I can do is pin it, set it up top so I can look for it later and I can come back in here and see what's going on so I can have it as an action item. Additionally, one of the things that people underutilize with this chat function is the ability to be able to add things to the chat, like dragging files in. Right? Being able to pull information in about like if you're working on a contract or if you're working on a specific picture file, or this could be the place where everything goes. You can additionally add apps directly into the chat function that you're working with, whether that's a PDF, whether that's a OneNote file, if you want to start working with this. These chat systems are built to have very hyper-intensive threaded conversations so that everybody can go back and, and look for them and understand what the process was that got you to a certain decision. These are really helpful when you're doing um, interdepartmental problem solving. So this will happen in our organization from time to time. We'll have something go terrible for one of our clients, like a firewall goes down or something bad happens, right? So we immediately launch into incident command and response mode, right? So we implement our incident framework system. And let's say our technical lead on the service desk is responsible for troubleshooting the issue. So we don't want them communicating with the client because their job is to fix the problem. So what we'll immediately do is assign an incident command lead. They'll be responsible for communicating with the client. We'll start a chat thread with the technical resource, the incident command lead, and the client's account manager. 
everybody is now suddenly completely in the know. We begin communicating in real time. We begin dropping in screenshots of information. We can upload files. We can send each other like links to issues that we're finding that are similar on the internet. And we're able to communicate effectively in real time with the client. And we're all in the, in the know. The way that used to, to work in the office, honestly, was we would all stand around somebody's desk. We would like, suddenly everybody would go to the service desk and I would walk through the service desk to get coffee and I'm like, and I'd see like three of our folks like around one of our tech leads desk and I'd be like, oh no, what's wrong, right? But now we don't have to disrupt everybody. Everybody can still be involved and communicating and they can do other things at the same time, but everybody's informed and they're in the know. So let's say at the end of all of this, that I'm like, hey, I need to know what happened on that incident because uh, the clients, the owner of the company is asking me a question. So what they can do is come over here and they can add me to the chat later, which is cool. You can include the entire chat history. You can include just the last X number of days of the chat history, or you can say, you don't get to see anything that happened prior. We're just adding you in so that we can communicate with you further. This could be a good way to communicate with somebody if you wanna have a private conversation about something and then bring in a person later to say, hey, I wanna ask you a couple of questions and we wanna have this all threaded in the same place. So these are advanced functions in the system that allow you to really make use of the, the product. One of the other things that I think is important is if you've got a group chat like this and you're looking for something very specific, you can at people. And that actually shows up in their activity feed. It'll ping them basically like not just the fact that this has now been updated and it shows additional information has been added to the chat, but you can say, hey, Dan, where are we on that sales thing? Obviously I can't type. If anybody here who knows me knows that I have to have spell check, which is great because it has that. The other thing about this medium too, which I like a lot more than I like email is because it happens in real time. We've encouraged everybody in our organization to stop sending inner office emails. Our emails are entirely for communicating with people outside of our organization. We communicate almost entirely through teams now, right? Which has been really refreshing because now I can go through here, I can see what's going on. The communication doesn't have to be formal. It's very simple. Like Dan is like, so, so as an example, oh, here's Haley. Dan is out of pocket today. And then I'm like, sweet. I don't even have to respond to her, I just thumbs up. So that's really helpful. So there's a lot of things that you can do in here where you, where you deformalize the way, I don't know if that's a word, but you deformalize the communication protocols so that people can, can quickly respond to one another and update each other in a way that's meaningful. And if, and if Haley doesn't understand what thumbs up means, she can respond to me immediately. It's like, what, what do you mean? Is it, is it good that Dan's out of pocket or it's good that I'm gonna update you? Like I'm, I'm confused. Right, so that's, that's super important. One of the other things that, that people have a tendency to forget is we do like Dan. <clears throat> One of the things that we have a tendency to forget is that there is formatting functionality within the system. So I, I saw this, I don't know why I didn't know it was here, but the first time I saw it, my mind exploded. I was like, Dan is so great, right? We love Dan so much. And so I'm going to bold that I'm going to highlight it yellow. I'm gonna make this font large. I'm gonna underline it. So I, boom, Dan is so great. That's, it's terrible for marketing, but it, it works. You can add hyperlinks into this as well, which wind up being a part of your, your chat communication so that they're always there. It's really great. I like it a lot. One of the other things that can be done is that you can prioritize your messages, urgent, important, standard, right? Those are all really awesome. And then like just for fun, right? You can put all sorts of like little gifts and stuff in here if you're interested in that sort of thing, right? So a lot of other things you can do, but I love this stuff. Um, so one of the things that I want to talk about now, uh, down my notes here. Um, one of the things that I think is really important is you can schedule meetings for Teams out of Outlook. There's a little button there now that says schedule in Teams with your calendar, which is great. Um, for me, I've gotten in the habit now, if I'm not scheduling something with an outside party, if it's somebody within my organization, um, I schedule everything out of Teams. Um, it's pretty helpful. So when I schedule stuff out of Teams, I click on it. There's a really robust scheduling assistant, which I actually like better um, than I like 
the stuff that's in Outlook. It gives you the ability to see who's available quickly on the calendar. Um, it will add information directly to the link that you send out on how to join the team. Um, you can add an entire channel. I'll talk about that in a second, which is kind of a double-edged sword. Um, I like it sometimes or sometimes I don't. Um, so I had the general Contoso channel. Um, you put your meeting notes in here, you get your meeting set up. It's, it's pretty great. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna set up a meeting. I'm gonna say fake meeting with Haley. And I'm gonna add Haley to the meeting. <clears throat> and we're going to schedule it for right now, for right-ish. And you know, um, we're not going to add a channel, not going to repeat. We're just going to create the meeting. So once the meeting's there, one of the things I like about this is that when you're using Teams as an organization, you'll see that there's this little join button as you get close to the meeting. It's pretty sweet. Um, you can hit that whenever you need to. Right? And then just jump right into the meeting. So once you join the meeting, I'm going to join this meeting. Ooh, I don't know if it's going to like that. I'm going to turn this off and that. Join now. So it's waiting for others to join. So when we're joining this meeting, one of the things that I want you guys to see is show meeting notes. Right? Showing the meeting notes is super, super, super important. Because what we found is that when we're working remotely, that we miss inside of meetings at our office, we would almost always have somebody that was taking notes, somebody that was like responsible for, for putting it together. And then once they took some of the notes, they would email them out to everybody. Um, they would put them in OneNote or do something with them. But the meeting notes here are really great because you can hit take notes and it begins to build this for you. And then you can actually add notes to the meeting in real time, which is critical. So as you're working through things together as a team, nobody's misunderstanding what it is you're talking about, right? Anybody can update the notes. Um, I recommend that you usually assign one person to do it and then they can kind of repeat things at the end. But adding the notes into the meeting are really, really important. So you just start putting in your notes. Notes are, notes are good. So you got notes, it's awesome. Um, if you want to get back to where you were, you can hit view notes tab, which is cool. And you have extra stuff up here, right? Like files that you can drop directly into the meeting. You can see the chat. If you guys are chatting on the side during the meeting, right? You've got your little info up here and then whiteboard, which is really cool. So I love the whiteboard. Uh, I'm going to say use whiteboard in teams. So the whiteboard allows, I am a very visual person. I whiteboard everything I bought on Amazon, a little pad and a stylus, cost me about 30 bucks. Um, you can use a mouse if you want. Let me see if it'll work on this. Um, oh, did I do something? All right, hold on. See if I can click over here. And, uh, uh, well, I can't do it, but I've got a stylus. That's what I get for trying to live in real time. But you can write notes, you can do things. You can make all sorts of really cool stuff happen, right? You can erase it, but it gives you the opportunity for you to be able to collaborate, draw things. You can copy things into here. Um, and then this will live inside the meeting forever and ever and ever, which is cool. So I really like the meetings. I like the meeting notes. Let me bring up my notes here that I accidentally closed so I can make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. Um, so meetings are really, really important. The other thing that we like to do during meetings, which most people aren't doing, but should be doing is recording the meetings. So this is really important. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this, uh, that you can use the recording function, right? So when you record a meeting, right, you can start recording the meeting and the people that are in that meeting will be able to see the meeting recording in Microsoft stream. Microsoft stream is built in to Microsoft Stream is built into your Office 365 tenancy. Everybody's got it. So when you record the meeting after a few minutes, it'll say your meeting is ready in Stream. You can go to Stream inside Office 365 and you can go see any of the content that belongs to you, right? So if you're in shared meetings, that sort of thing, you'll see all of the meetings. One of the things that we've started doing, which is really important, is we go over concepts. 
So let's say Branson and I decide that we're going to have this really awesome meeting and the meetings about how to better use some aspect of teams. So I'll actually use it almost like a podcast and I'll sit with Branson and be like, Hey Branson, explain to me how you do this thing. And he's like, great. And he'll share his screen and he'll show me how it works. And he clicks through it and he does all this really neat stuff. And we talk about it and I ask him questions that are loaded where he's able to answer and give context. And the video lasts, you know, three to five minutes. Sometimes for a more complex process, it's 20 or 30 minutes. And then when it gets posted into teams, you can take that and you can assign it to a channel. We have channels assigned to every single one of our departments. We have an accounting channel. We have an account management channel. We have an operations channel. And so when there's something that's important that let's say there's a specific accounting process that affects the way the sales managers interact with their team, the way that the account managers work, the way that the service desk works, we assign it to every single one of their channels and we go, hey, this is important. This is why it affects you. And we don't have uh, like all hands lunch and learns like we used to, where we would have 30 people in a meeting for 45 minutes, um, not working and eating free lunch. Now it's like, Hey, there's a 20 minute video out there. You need to go out there and check it out. Now this is not an LMS. To my knowledge, there's no way to confirm that people have been assigned to and have, and have actually watched the videos, but you are providing them the content. Not to mention the fact if you bring on new team members, it gives you the ability of making sure that they're all on the same page for the stuff that you're doing. When it comes to team meetings as well, one of the things that is really, really important for the meeting, if the people that you had in the meeting, if you try to invite somebody to a meeting after the meeting has been over with so they can see the chat or they can see the notes, it doesn't work like that. They can only see them if they were originally invited to the meeting. That might change later with teams but don't like have a really cool meeting with a bunch of notes and chat information in it and be like, Oh, I'm going to like share this with my boss and invite them to the meeting after it was over. The meeting will still be there and you can invite them to it. They're just not going to see any of the context. You can go back and share with them the video. Um, and one of the things I would recommend if there's things that you don't want other people to know about on the video, I would certainly stress that to the folks that are in the video because any person that was in the meeting that was assigned to the meeting is going to have access to that video once it's recorded in stream. So that's really important to understand. Um, we'll talk about channels real quick and uh, try to get this wound down for you guys. So inside of Teams, we'll stop this meeting. Nobody wants to be in this meeting with me. Um, so Teams is called Teams because of Teams. All right? So Teams can be built um, specifically. You can create a brand new team. Uh, you can create team security groups. We create teams uh, in our organization. They start with a SharePoint group and then we expand them from there. There are dynamic teams and there are static teams. Um, I'm, there's reasons for both. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the dynamic teams. We started with those, but it makes it impossible to add people to it. If you don't, you can't add people from other departments to dynamic teams. So if you have a sales team and it's your static team, that's through a assigned group in like SharePoint and you want to add an account manager to that team because there's some process that spans both departments, it, you can't, you have to make them, uh, you have to make them static teams and not dynamic teams so you can add people to them or vice versa. But there's a, there's a reason that they do it that way. And you just need to be careful when you're getting them set up. So teams are kind of an overarching like system. It's like a group of people that can collaborate together and inside teams channels are created. Every team has a general channel. You can't get rid of it. It exists in perpetuity, right? It's always going to be there. So what I recommend, and based on some of Microsoft's best practices, is that in this channel, let's say that this team is your sales team, right? You add information here that's pertinent to the entire team, whether that's your CRM link, whether that's your stream training video channel, whatever that looks like should be here. So it's a one-stop shop for that group to get together and have access to all of those tools so that there's no confusion about what they're supposed to be doing. For our marketing team inside of Iron Edge Group, we have a tab that we've created that's a PDF, right? So you can go here and say, I'm gonna create a, a, a PDF tab, right? So when you go to it, you can put a file in here and when it pops up, they just see the actual PDF. It's not a link to the PDF, it's the actual displayed PDF. And so from the marketing team, we have our brand standards color palettes, like font, all that stuff, because we always inevitably have to go dig for that somewhere. So we just put it straight up on the team's homepage. So when we go to that team, we see all that information, which is pretty sweet. You can add all sorts of stuff in here, right? 
And I'm going to talk about that on a channel and one of your sub channels. But my recommendation is do not clutter up your general channel because it's impossible to get rid of stuff once it's on here. Right. Particularly when it comes to starting conversations, this, this channel should be moderated. This ch general channel should be only somebody who's an admin for that group. Somebody who is capable of posting announcements and information. Right. So one of the things that you can do is create a channel. So a channel can be something that's specific, like a subgroup within the group. It can be specific to a specific project, right? Because after you're done with it, you can hide it, right? So you don't see it anymore. At this point, there's no way to archive them. I'm sure that's coming so that this, this section of your, your system doesn't get too cluttered, but you can always hide these channels. But you put information here, and this is where you can start really building out a lot of your uh, integration to other systems, right? So you'll see here, what we have built out is a link to a spreadsheet that's in SharePoint. So people can in real time, add, update, coordinate, communicate on this document. When I'm in it, other people who are in the document will see what I am doing. There'll be a little doc, like a little system up here that'll say other people are in the system. It'll tell me who's in it. It'll show me what information I'm changing. You can get very collaborative with this. So if you will have something that's specific to what you're doing and you don't have to dig for it, you can put it right here. One of the things that I really like is that it's integrates into, you can add a, uh, integrates into a Microsoft planner. So this gives you the ability to, to create a Kanban to assign people within your team, right? That's the one drawback to this is that it's difficult to assign people outside of this team from other teams to your Kanban. But once they are assigned, over here, if they have planner, they can pin it. And when they have a task assigned to them, it'll show up in their planner, which is really, really awesome. So that they, they know, they'll get an email too, say, hey, you've been assigned a task, right? And you can get into these and really get nasty with the stuff that's in them. And we went through that with Branson's webinar a couple of weeks ago. So we go back and watch that if you wanna see a little more of a deep dive there. Other functions that I like, the ability to integrate Power BI reports, which you know, Iron Edge Group, we're hot on Power BI. The ability to have that integrated directly into your team channel so you can see the information and share it live with one another. It's really awesome. <clears throat> and then like I was showing you guys earlier, being able to integrate a, a, a stream channel directly into your team. See if human resources will allow us, there you go. So it's a company-wide channel, right? You can name it whatever you are, human resources, training videos, save it. It'll post to the channel. Hey, Andrew, this is mod administrator, but he's created a really cool stream channel. And when you go to it, you're gonna see all the different videos that are available and you can watch them directly from this channel, which is great. I'm an admin on this, so I can remove this your team will not be able to remove stuff unless they've been given the ability to do that. Um, links, documents, um, just so I can show you guys an example of adding a link. Um, this one's really cool, I like this. So let's just go to I'm gonna say CRM. I know this isn't the, the case. Okay, save. Uh oh, oh, it won't let me do it. That's funny. Um, what'll wind up happening is that, that page will load right here as exactly as if it were a uh, website. Um, you can interact with it directly from this interface, which is great. Um, so it gives you the ability of being able to put stuff in there um, without having to have a hyperlink that somebody has to go click somewhere else, they can get right to it. See if this one will work. Maybe, maybe, boom. There you go. I should have known Salesforce was going to be persnickety. So you can get directly into the website. You can interact with it without it popping out to a second page. Super helpful if you want to do something within your team, if you want to add a specific uh, link. Um, human resources staff, you can put stuff to like your 
your PEO link, you can put stuff back, back to, for, for your all staff, you can have a human resources channel under all staff and you can have information that's linked back to the SharePoint site that's got PDF documents for filing insurance claims, information like that. It's super helpful. So, um, yes. Andrew, I'm going to cut in uh, simply because we have a couple of questions uh, before you wrap up. Uh, yeah, let's, I got, actually, I went through a lot of stuff. Let's, let's, you, let's you did, do but, um, some of, some of them are actually really good questions. We've answered a few of them. Okay. Uh, one of them that was requested is, can you show um, the, the tagging of individuals and teams? So if you need to call somebody specifically, you can kind of alert them to let them know that they've been mentioned in a certain form. Um, I mean like the at mentions. Yeah. Tagging or well, tagging, tagging within teams. Um, I don't know if there's a, another thing outside of that. Um, well, I know that like within the channels. So if we're in a general, like a, like we're talking about monthly reports and I can be all like, like at, um, See, she's not in that team, so she won't be able to be addressed in there. Dan, I think, is in this team. Yeah. But yeah, I mentioned, well, let's do this. We'll mention Linda Holloway, right? So you can do that, and they'll, and Lydia will get a notification in her activities saying that. She's been she's been tagged in something. Right? Hey, you need to you need to handle that. You need to look at this, and you can do the when you do it. You can actually like include hyperlinks. You can do other things in it for these at mentions. So they basically hits them up and says, "Hey, you need to you need to get this knocked out." I hope that's what we were talking about. I, I don't. Other than that, yeah. I'm not sure what it, what tagging. Would so be. actually, so actually, uh, it's in our questions. Tom uh, Tom provided uh, some documentation on it. Um, tagging within your organization. So how. To, um, um, so basically, uh, you can set default tags so that things fall into certain categories. Mm. Um, so for dealing with something that's about design or engineering, you, know, you can add that as a tag. So it kind of gets, uh, kind of the way that we work with our wiki, um, that you can right. start something pretty easily. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there's ways to, to, I, I didn't know that that existed, but that would be something that definitely the, the system is capable of doing. Um, I'm not familiar with it, but we can do it. Um, one of the things that I know that you can do in planner, um, when you go to, to that, um, which is probably a little different than, than, than you've got these labels, which are really cool. Like these are un uh, un, uh, structured in this particular, uh, market plan, but you can label these different things and they will actually show up, uh, inside. They will show up on here. See, so it says label two. So for us internally, we have like waiting on engineer, or you know, in procurement, we have different ways that we can do that within here, which provides some additional context. It's not the same as tagging that I think Tom was talking about, but there are different ways of being able to really get granular with what you've got in the systems. Any other questions, Branson, that we wanna bring up? Uh, there is a, an additional one, um, an interesting one about adding people outside of your organization to your Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Um, would you consider that a security risk um, and would you advise against it? Um, so you can add people to your teams. Um, you can create a team that's specifically for uh, outside folks. Um, we have clients where we're a part of their team um, and vice versa so that we can communicate effectively. When done properly, it is not a security risk. Um, I would make sure that that is managed um, as part of the administrative system to, to ensure you have to go into the Office 365 um, infrastructure and actually to designate certain domains that can be added as, as guests. So it's not something that can just be done by any person on, in the organization. It has to be done at the administrative level, which is, uh, which is critical. Um, but one of the things that, that we've started doing and that I think is really helpful is, you know, Zoom is great for these webinars, um, but it, it's difficult for me sometimes to have to flip between Zoom and Teams when I'm doing meetings. So we're going to start inviting um, our partners and our clients and our and our, our sales prospects. We're going to start inviting them to meetings via Teams, right? So that that should be turned on so that you can basically create one uh, ecosystem where everything lives. And that gives us the ability of like recording those meetings so we can review it later in case there are people that are stakeholders that need to be involved, weren't able to be in that meeting or if there's context that we missed or there's a lot of talking that went on that, uh, that you know, just went really fast so we need to go back and take notes. 
um, rather than having it in two systems and have to download Zoom and then upload it to stream. So um, that that's super, um, that's a super important thing that, that we're going to start doing and I would recommend it. Um, is there a way to pull meeting notes from the chat events and save it in a drive separate from Teams? Uh, you can certainly copy and paste it out. Um, right now, I'm not sure that that can be done within the team system. The goal is to try to keep it all in one place. Um, from a compliancy standpoint, um, there's ways of archiving the, the chat <clears throat> so that that can, that can be taken care of. And one of the things that, um, Grantson, yeah? Well, one of the pieces that we've been working with is OneNote. I don't know if you're going to speak to that, but um, if, you, if you're if you trying to figure out how you do it within a channel, OneNote is an option. There's mm -hmm. an option there that's very viable. Everything will live within one notebook and you can quickly access it. Um, so when you start meetings, instead of using meeting notes, maybe it's that everyone is using a, a page within that within that shared OneNote uh, notebook. Yeah, OneNote is really great for your channels, right? And you can add a OneNote channel, you can add a OneNote notebook to your meetings as well, um, which is super helpful. And then just one of the things I had up, but it's really important to know is that Microsoft has uh, pushed dramatically forward with trying to get, um, so trying to get um, data loss prevention built into their product stack. So if you're worried about information getting outside of your organization, like credit card data, social security numbers, that sort of thing, this integrates into Teams. Uh, um, this integrates into Teams, this integrates into Office 365. So this is uh, additional. Uh, it's not, um, I think, part of the basic package. There's a, a DLP system for security, but some of the stuff is included. Um, so there's uh, ways to, to manage your records, you know, build governance around your data uh, and ensure that um, if you do have any concerns about data leakage outside of your organization, you can create some systems with some administrative overhead, but it'll allow you to, to help mitigate some of that risk. So um, I'm going to look into that uh, tags thing that Tom sent over because I'm sure that's just something that is about to be really awesome. Um, we don't use Teams rooms internally, um, frankly, because right now we don't, we're not in our offices. We're all remote. Um, we were at the time using Zoom and uh, communicating some via Teams before we wound up going remote um, in, uh, in early March. Um, but Teams rooms are, are awesome. It allows people to drop in and out of meetings. Um, it's a next, next level way of, of being able to, to function in a hybridized environment. Um, and I would recommend that uh, if you do wind up having like conference rooms and stuff and places where people are gonna be physically moving in and out of, that you can build those out so that people can come and go out of them um, without, um, and that you've got all your equipment and systems integrated into them. So it's good stuff. Um, cool, I'm gonna stop my sharing. And I know I'm, I'm over, but I wanna really thank everybody who stuck around the entire time. Um, we appreciate you guys uh, being a part of our webinars and listen to me ramble on about technology that I think is cool um, and pontificate on what the next great thing is gonna be to help us get through this mess that we're all in together. But the goal is to try to help one another, get collaborative and be agile. So um, thanks again for all of your support to Iron Edge Group. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys here in a couple of weeks when we uh, start talking about uh, security uh, and uh, focus on, on how that affects organizations uh, beginning in July. Uh, we will also talk about our tools, um, but uh, we're going to have more of a, a focus on security. We'll be posting information about that. So y'all have a great uh, afternoon and enjoy the rest of your week. I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks.